Uh, I'm going to start by saying that I have this antiquated device with me. Um, ben and I were trying to figure out how to use it earlier. <laughs> Unsuccessfully, we sent a text message to someone on accident. I don't know who, but if, if you got it, I, our apologies. This is uh, Rivertree's phone, and um, I'm showing it to you because you are welcome to text questions about today's sermon uh, to this number. Does, do people need this number? Do you have this number somewhere? It's in, Perfect. It's in the thingy, the, the, the leaflet. Thank you. Um, so text away, and I will only answer the ones that I like. So, you know, good luck figuring out what, what that is. We'll have a little bit of time at the end where I will, I'll, I will try and answer a couple of them as much as time allows. So good to be here. If you don't know, um, as Ben said, you know, we, we certainly have kind of a swap thing going on a couple times a year between the doctor uh, Chris and myself, um, and and I also have some history here, um, being on staff at River Tree many moons ago now, over a decade ago. Um, but there's there's lots of uh, meaning for me in coming back every time, and um, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. I want to start this morning by inviting you to think about a decision that you may be facing right now or that you have faced recently? Try and, try and get concrete here for a moment and think about a decision that has been before you or is before you right now. I'll throw out a couple of options here. Um, should I take that job? Should I accept that promotion? Should I pursue that career? Should I confront that person? And if so, what should I say or not say? Do I marry this person? Or do I call the relationship off? Do I buy this house or move into that neighborhood? How should we go about having that difficult conversation with our teenager? How do I write this email to my boss? Should I write this email to my boss? Right? <laughs> do we hire this person or do we hire that person? As a church, do we take a left at the fork in the road or do we head right, right? On and on it goes. Every day, every single day, you and I face decisions. And some are simple. A few of them are simple, but most are not. Most decisions you and I face are complex and complicated. They're emotionally fraught. They're very challenging to figure out. I think there is a common held belief in our world today, though, that if you can just get enough information about a decision, then you'll know what to do. I was thinking about this, about, about whether or not that's true. And I, I looked online and I, I did a Google search of how many Google searches there are happening every day. And uh, Google told me, anybody want to guess how many Google searches happen every day? A million? Two million? A billion? Two, just two? Two billion, okay, yes. 3.5 billion. That's 40,000 searches every second. 40,000, 40,000, 40,000. Isn't that crazy? We have more information available to us today than any human beings have ever had in the course of human history, and yet are we making better decisions today than we have in the past? I'm not sure the evidence points in that direction. So... <laughs> Is information alone enough? I think the answer is no. Knowledge is critical. Don't misunderstand. You're going to hear the Proverbs talk about knowledge a lot. Knowledge is really important. But it alone is not enough. Nor is morality. Hang with me here on this one. I think another common belief in our world today is that if you have high moral principles, those moral principles will guide you to the right decision all of the time. Let's say that I want to um, heal, help heal the racial wound that is gaping and, and raw in our country right now. Let's say that I felt called to do that. That is something of high moral principle. That is good. We should be pursuing racial reconciliation. But how do you do that? Because if you don't have wisdom 
it's quite possible that you might go about that very good thing in all the wrong ways and mess, just make a mess of it. Right? How about the, the morally good thing of helping someone come out of poverty? That is a good thing. That is something of high principle. But how do you do it? If you think that there's a one-size-fits-all, you are mistaken, of course, right? Because every situation is unique and complex, and it takes wisdom to navigate situations like that. We need something more than just information. We need something more even than just high moral principle. We need what the book of Proverbs gives to us. This ancient book used for millennia to help people grow in wisdom. And in this series, we're going to try and take a look at what this book teaches us about some specific areas of life. Money, the words we speak, our emotional life, what happens when we don't have wisdom. And today we're going to talk about making wise decisions. I'm going to walk us through these three steps And they come right from Proverbs, as we'll see in a moment. This book, this ancient book, instructs us to do three things when we're facing a decision. And by all means, these are not necessarily the only three things, but they're good kind of pegs to hang hang our steps on. And they are examining our hearts, seeking outside counsel, and leaning into the source of wisdom. And before we get into those three, one, one thing you'll notice right away is that all three of those principles that we find in the book of Proverbs assume that you and I understand that we are not smart enough to make decisions on our own. All three of these principles assume that we understand that humility is required when making wise decisions. Right? You probably will not examine your heart if you are prideful. Because why would you? You've already figured it out and you're already pretty awesome. And so let's go, right? Let's just make the decision. You're not going to seek outside counsel if you think that you on your own are capable of making the call. And you're not going to lean into the source of all wisdom because you're the source of all wisdom. Now, none of us would say it that blatantly, right? None of us would say, hey, source of all wisdom right here. And yet... Just kind of examine your life for a moment. When I at least examine mine, I realize that there are times when I plow ahead when faced with a choice, a decision, and I assume there's just an underlying assumption that I know what to do, that I alone can make the call here and make the right one. So this assumes that humility is required, and we get the sense of this in Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that appears to be right But in the end, it leads to death. When you're plowing ahead on your own, you think, I've got this. I I know what to do. And as you start heading down that road, you realize, oh, no. Right? We were in Minneapolis a couple weekends ago, my family and I. We were there visiting some friends. And we were also there because my wife was at a training. So while she would go to the training all day, my four children and I and our two friends and their three kids would go and do things, you know, visit, visit city. Great, beautiful city in Minneapolis. Sunday afternoon rolls around and our friends suggest, hey, let's go down to the Mississippi River and let's see a, a water ski show. You know where they like jump off of huge ramps and, and they stand on each other's shoulders to create these human pyramids? It's actually quite impressive. I, without thinking, go, yeah, let's do it. This is the right thing to do. This is a no-brainer. Why even give this any thought? Let's go. And so as we're driving there, I start to realize my situation. My kids have been in the car for 12 hours the day before. They're tired. And I notice this as they start to kind of get at each other at every turn. There's the little things are starting to become big things for no real good reason. I look at the clock, it's 4.30 central time, which is 5.30 our time, and that's normally when we start eating dinner. I don't have a, a morsel of food in the vehicle. I brought nothing. So we arrive there, and I mean, it's, it's not good. I almost decide to just leave. But my friends pull through. They've brought blankets, and I didn't even realize it's food. They pull out picnic baskets. I mean, the day is saved. But for a moment, I realize 
we are, we are headed towards death. <laughs> I thought it was the right thing to do, you know, but I didn't, I didn't assess the situation. I knew what to do, right? That's a lighthearted example, but I think the principle extends beyond that. We think we know what to do, and then we get along the way and realize, oh no, we're in trouble. So these three principles require us to admit that humility is needed. Humility is needed when we face decisions. And the first step, again, that the Proverbs instruct us to take is to examine our heart. Look at these two verses that are quite similar. Proverbs 16, 2, All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Proverbs 21, 2, A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Quite a number of years ago, at the beginning of the branch's life, we were in a search process for, to fill a position, and we, we made the call of who to hire, and it just so happened that one of the people who we did not hire was related to someone who went to our church. Did you follow that? We didn't hire someone who goes to our church. Uh, it didn't go well. Uh, that news was not terribly well received, and I, I got an email. And it's understandable that, that, you know, these folks would have been very upset um, and, and just lamenting the fact that, that their son didn't, didn't get the job. But the email was rough. It was a rough one to read. You've gotten hard emails, right? At work, from family, from friends, you know. So what do you think I wanted to do? <laughs> Send, you know, right? Like, take that! You know, you have no idea how carefully we weighed this decision and how dare you and, you know, whatever. Well, I didn't do that. I, I knew enough not to do that, but I still composed an email. And um, I sat on it for a couple of days, and I, I actually thought I was kind of right in the content of the email. It was very um, direct, very kind of, don't you dare make these accusations because here's actually the way it was, you know. And as I sat on it for a couple of days, I felt like God's Spirit just kept saying to me, check your heart. Check your heart. And as I did, I realized that most of what I had written in that email needed to go. It's not even that what I had written was untrue, but it was going to lead to more destruction. It was going to drive us even further apart. So God just kept saying, check your heart. Check your heart. One of the first things to ask when you are weighing a decision is this. God, reveal to me my heart. Help me to see my motivations in this decision. See, these two verses, they, they, kind, of, they kind of lead you to believe, don't they? And I think rightly so. Just how easy it is to overlook your own motivations when making a decision. All a person's ways seem pure to them. Ever felt like that? <laughs> this seems like this is the right thing to do, you know. A person may think their own ways are right. But the Lord weighs the heart. I don't buy a lot of things. I'm not a shopper. I don't really enjoy shopping. You know, blessings to all of you in the Tanger Outlet malls and all that stuff. You know, okay, whatever. You know, I could care less. I could care less. But good for you. Um, I don't, I don't ten, tend to buy a lot. But when I do get my eyes set on something, I'm like a bulldog. You know, it's a couple things a year. But man, and right now it's a TV. I'm just, this is like open confession time, folks. Like, we redid a room, and I wired it all to mount a, a new TV on the wall, and we have this 32-inch measly thing, you know, just terrible, terrible. I mean, how can we survive, right? I need something bigger, I think, and I'm locked onto this idea. And is there anything wrong with a TV? No, TVs in and of themselves are not evil, Right? It's, it's, a, it's a piece of electron. Okay, maybe. Maybe someone <laughs> says. I, you know, I, maybe, but I don't think so in and of themselves. No. But what's my heart in this? That's the question that like, keeps getting raised. Why do I want this thing? 
Do I think it's going to make me happy? Do I think it's going to bring contentment to my life? Is it a substitute in some form? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just having to weigh this decision. And eventually the one we have will break accidentally or whatever, you know. <laughs> but, you know, we will buy one at some point. But um, I'm just, I'm hearing God say, check your heart, check your heart, check your heart. This is the, f- the first thing that we need to do. Just evaluate what's, what's happening here. What are my motivations? And again, we need God to help us with this because often we don't see it. I'll say more about that in a moment. So examine your heart. Secondly, seek outside counsel. Man, the Proverbs are, are just, they hit this home over and over. I love this first one from chapter 10, verse 8. The wise are glad to be instructed but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. (laughs) Fools do what? Talk, talk, talk. All the words are always leaving them and going to other people. Wise people are able to receive words. They're able to close their pie hole long enough to be able to listen carefully to the counsel of other people. Proverbs 15, 22 says this, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Proverbs 10, 17, people who accept discipline are on the pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. All of these verses point to the value and gift that an outside perspective can bring. And why do we need the counsel of others? Because when you and I are in the midst of making a decision, it is nearly impossible to see things clearly. This is where humility is required. That's a hard thing to say. I think sometimes, but it's, it's so often true. There's both an inward blindness and an overall blindness that happens when we are in the middle of making a decision. The inward blindness I alluded to earlier, right? Come on, folks. When, when you are in the middle of a significant decision, the emotions are high. Are they not? Whether it's fear or excitement, the emotions are, are here. They are elevated. Um, There's a lot at stake, yes, when making a significant decision. Career, job, home, school, all that stuff. You feel the pressure. You you know the ramifications. And because of all of that, it is so hard to see things clearly. There's an inward blindness to our own motivations, even our own emotions, our own perceptions. I'm a conflict-averse person, generally speaking. I prefer not to fight. And so when my wife and I potentially have something to fight about, I try and find a way out of it. I will rationalize to death any way to not bring up that thing that's bothering me. You know what I mean? Are any of you like this? Some of you are like, yeah, I love a fight. Let's do this, you know? (laughs) Throw down. Like Some of you are like that. You're wired that way and... uh, Thank God for you. I am not that way. I'm trying to avoid, whenever I can, a conflict. I I tell myself that this is good. It's good to avoid conflict. It's good not to bring that thing up. And the reality is that I'm so blind to what's actually happening inside of me that I can't see what's true. I can't see that actually what my relationship is needs is to is to work this thing through and not avoid it and avoid it and avoid it there's an inward blindness that happens and there's an overall blindness right even if you understand your motivations perfectly clearly even if you are praying for weeks on end about this decision before you the the truth is that Almost every time, the only way you can see this problem, this decision, this choice, is from your perspective. It's just what it means to be a human being. And this is the gift of an outside perspective, an outside counsel, is that someone else can come from another angle and see the same thing, but just see it maybe differently. And they can see maybe what's happening internally in you, your motivations that you can't otherwise see. So seeking wise counsel is really helpful as long as the counsel you are seeking is wise. 
and from a person of wisdom. I, I am struck sometimes, and you may not know this, I work another job part-time, and um, great place, great people, but occasionally there's this thing that happens in the office where someone is facing a decision of some significance, and they just kind of, I, I watch them just wander around the office, just say, hey, what do you think I should do, you know? Or, or around the lunch table, we're all sitting around lunch table swapping stories, and they kind of, hey, here, here, hey, everyone, what do you think? And I'm going, oh my gosh, don't do that. That, it, that does not help most of the time. Um, when, when we're going to counsel, when we're seeking outside counsel, it's from people who are people of wisdom. So if you're wondering, well, who is that? Who should I go to? I would suggest, as, as one filter to kind of run some people through, are the three things we're talking about today. Are the people that you're going to for counsel, are they people of solid character and motivation you know are they people who examine their own hearts right number two do they seek outside counsel or are they people who tend to think that they've got it all figured out i would avoid the person who tends to think they've got it all figured out i would not go to that person generally speaking for counsel and then thirdly do they lean into the source of wisdom might be a couple of filters to kind of think through as you're trying to determine who do I go to when, I'm, when I need some help, when I need that outside perspective. And that does lead into that third step that we're instructed to take here in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Leaning into the source. You probably know this. In fact, I, I saw it, we're going to use it as a prayer at the end, um, which is so cool. I didn't know that until I saw the order of worship today. So perfect. We get to kind of get ready for it right now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. And He will make your paths straight. I want to focus on two words as we close this morning. The first is submit. Submit. In all your ways, submit to Him. And He will make your paths straight. Anybody here desiring a straight path? When I meet with people who are in the midst of a critical decision, I mean, their longing and desire for a straight path, for the right path, is, is so strong. We all want desperately to make the right choice. And this verse tells us that the way to a straight path is through submission. Here are three, three decisions I had to face this week in which I had to make a choice about submitting there was a moment this week i know i shared a story earlier but i had one this week where i wanted to give someone a big old piece of my mind you know i wanted to let them have it because of what they said to me it's actually really hurtful and i found this kind of internal conversation happening and i was trying to run it through this grid what are, what are my motivations and what i'm going to say here all right what would what would my trusted advisors. I have a couple people in my life. One of them is Phil. What would Phil say to me I should do in response to what's been said here? And then, and then I asked myself, what, how do, what would it look like to submit to God's ways in this moment? Because what I want to do is retaliate. I want to fire back. I think God's ways would say, choose, choose the path of peace. Choose the path of humility. You don't have to get run over, but there is a, a different way, and I had to decide whether or not I would submit to it. How about this scenario? Someone at work just shows up into your cubicle, or you're out in the field at work, or you're in the classroom, and someone just starts unloading some gossip. And you have a choice about whether you will submit to God's ways, which would be to kind of shut that thing right down, or will you participate? I had to make that choice this week. The other third one I'll share with you happened last night. I was at a party for a 12-year-old, uh, my daughter's friend. There were about five families there, a bunch of kids. And they had rented this game called Nine Square. Anybody familiar with Nine Square? You know what Four Square is, right? On the ground, you draw four squares and you hit the ball from your square into other squares trying to get people out. Nine Square, there are nine squares, okay? Three by three. And everyone is in a square, just like Four Square. But the squares are above your head. 
and you're hitting balls up and over into other people's squares. It's a riot. I may or may not be highly competitive. <laughs> may. And we're, we're going along, and I am just, I'm crushing it. All the time, I'm getting to that middle square, which is the goal. You want to get to the middle square, and I'm getting there, and then I'm dominating from that point. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And then I hear someone say, wow, he sure is competitive. You know, not really to me, but just kind of a passing comment. Most of the people at this party I didn't know. And I'm starting to think, oh, I may need to dial it down a little bit. Because what I'm, I'm realizing is that uh, if I don't, I'm going to probably damage the possibility of relationship. Right? Like we're just playing a game of nine square, but there's actually something at stake here. People, all these people, of course, find out what I do you know, for a living. So there's that at stake. Not just my, their perception of me, but, oh, your church, you know. We're probably never going to go there, you know. I'm kind of joking, but I'm not. I'm thinking in this moment, I, I actually need to dial it down. Like, there is wisdom in just relaxing and getting beat a little bit more, you know. There's, there's wisdom in this. And that was a submitting to God's ways and not my own way, right? So when you're facing a decision, one of the questions to ask yourself is, what is God's way forward? The Bible doesn't give us detailed instructions on every decision you are going to face, of course. But it does give us these, these overarching themes. We should always choose love in our decisions. Always. Period. So look at the decisions and the choices before you and say, is there one that is of love and one that is not? Go with the loved one. Right? Submit to the ways of Jesus in that way. Right? Um, so submit, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us. And then the other word I want to call out is the word trust. There's actually an interesting word play uh, going on here. We don't catch it in the English. Uh, at the second half, you know, lean not into your own understanding. Okay. Lean, lean not. The word trust at the beginning of verse 5, when you look at its Hebrew roots, actually has a lot of meaning connected to the idea of leaning. So if you're, if you're a, a Jewish person, if you know Hebrew and you're reading this in Hebrew, you're going to pick up on that wordplay. You could translate it, I think, lean in to the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. This week, I, I'm being highly productive. I'm on YouTube, you know, and... Um, and I come across a video of uh, these two girls doing a trust fall. You know what a trust fall is, right? And back you go, right? Well, the one girl knows how to do it. And the other girl doesn't. They're sisters, I think. And so the girl who knows is saying, okay, close your eyes. So she closes her eyes. She says, I'm going to get behind you. Yeah, actually, she doesn't say that. She says, I I'm going to be right here, and I'm going to catch you on the count of three. So the girl closes her eyes, and the other girl comes behind her, and holds open her arms and says, one, two, three. And the girl goes. <laughs> oh, it's too much. Just find it. Find it today and have a good laugh. It's 12 seconds. It's worth it. <laughs> you know. Now, Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, or at least most of it. I don't think he had the idea of a trust fall in mind when, when this verse was penned. But it's actually a good picture, I think, of what verse 5 is calling us to do because trust falls are all or nothing right it's all or nothing which way are you going to fall which way are you going to lean and our lives are to be the same way all in holding nothing back trusting god with everything we have leaning completely into his wisdom and care so the question is which way are you leaning How you answer that question can make all the difference. Because here's the thing. There are going to be decisions that you're going to face in life that are going to be so complex that even after you examine your heart and even after you seek outside counsel, you will still find yourself in a place where the way forward 
is unclear. You ever been there? You, you, you pray and you, you agonize and you, you talk to people you trust and you still, weeks later, don't know what to do. It's not clear left or right. There's not a 100% like, bing, bing, pick me answer, you know? Plus, I just think that there are moments in life, there are decisions in life where there are two really good options. Yes? Sometimes I think when, when there are a couple of choices that are both wonderful, you've got to make a choice. And both aren't, like, one is it more glaringly better or worse than another. What do you do in those moments? They're going to come. And I think this verse instructs us to fall, to lean into God's care and wisdom. So that if you, if you find yourself unsure of what to do, but you've got to make the call, you've got to make a decision, Examine your heart, seek outside counsel, and then take a step and trust that God's care will be enough. Take a step, make a decision, knowing that even if you are, that is totally the wrong decision and you're going to make a mess of it, God is good enough to restore things and make things right again. We are going even after examining our hearts and seeking counsel and submitting to God's ways, we're going to find ourselves still getting it wrong sometimes. Still making decisions that, I don't know, there's, there's kind of fallout and consequence to. Which is why I think in all of it, this verse calls us to trust in God with our whole heart. To believe that we are God's children. And as such, we will be cared for even when we make the wrong choice, or even when there isn't a clear right choice to make, we could fall into God's care. Examine your heart. Ask God's help for that. Seek outside counsel. Find people who are wise and listen to what they think. Submit to God's ways. Choose God's ways over your own, over anyone else's, every time. And then trust. Fall. Lean into the source of everything good and right. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we're, we're talking today about something that... Um, is really complex. And I know that there are even people in this room that are listening and, and reading your words today and, and still don't know quite what to do. The way forward isn't perfectly clear. I pray that if there's anyone here today in that place, I pray that, that at the end of it all, they would lean into the knowledge that you are good, and that you love and protect and care for your children, always. And in that knowledge, God, it might take off a little bit of the pressure to always get it quote-unquote right. We would be able to live with a, a little bit more freedom because we know that, that you're with us regardless of what decisions we make, whether they're good or bad, or you're there, Always. Help us to lean into that understanding. Help us to trust in that truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.